The concept of darkness, more often than not, has a negative connotation to it. Yet, when used carefully, it can give designers the tools to create powerful sensory, uh, reflective, and performative solutions. But how does darkness actually impact how users interact with and experience a design? Creative people and welcome to Subjective Design, the channel where we discuss design concepts with the goal that you and I will use these concepts in our future projects. My name is Alice and for today's video we'll be looking at darkness. Darkness is defined as the partial or total absence of light. This applies to physical objects as well because when the material is dark itself it means that it's absorbing most of the light and since it's not reflecting the light back to our eyes uh, all we're able to see is the color black. For the same reason, these materials absorb more heat energy from light and feel warmer than lighter versions of the same material. This concept is also deeply embedded in Western culture, with the word dark often being used to describe malice, negative emotions, and even a lack of knowledge in the case of the dark ages. There is even a psychology concept called the dark triad, which refers to the three negative personality traits associated with malevolent characteristics. These are Machiavellianism, uh, narcissism, and psychopathy. People often talk about dark times to describe a period when they felt mentally trapped or hopeless among other negative emotions. In fact, a study that researched how people associate colors with emotion mentions that in Russia, Poland, Mexico, and Germany, uh, people associate the color black with anger along with red. Another interesting fact that I learned is that a different study found that retinal sensitivity decreases when uh, people are depressed, and because of that, colors literally look less vibrant. And when you think about it, it's not surprising that we think of darkness as a negative concept since it's considered nor a normal part of childhood development to be afraid of the dark. This is because darkness reduces the amount of visual stimuli in an environment and we're not able to distinguish what's around. Still, darkness is needed to give depth to our three-dimensional space, where without intentional obscurity, everything would look equally unimportant. Like a Where's Waldo illustration, where the point is to is that nothing stands out. This is best demonstrated by an artistic effect known as chiaroscuro, where dramatic lighting is used to emphasize the importance of the subject or the message. Emphasis also applies to the figure-ground relationship and how effective focal points are quickly noticeable over a contrasting background. But the common thread that ties negative connotations to darkness relates to the amount of dark elements and for how long people are exposed to them. For example, dense urban communities are typically warmer than rural ones because of something known as heat island effect, which is when heat absorptive materials accumulate in cities, such as uh, asphalt instead of trees or grass. This leads to higher cooling demands for the residents, which translates to higher AC costs and higher uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Beyond making it more difficult for us to see our surroundings and easier for criminals to act, dim environments have also been found to affect a person's ability to make moral decisions. And this is highlighted in a study that noticed how 61% of respondents cheated on a survey while sitting in a dim room, as opposed to 24% that were sitting in a well-lit room. As for people's health, being away from the sunlight for an, for an extended time can lead to vitamin D deficiency, which can weaken the bones and cause other more severe diseases. And in countries like Canada, where daylight doesn't last as long during the winter, people are also susceptible to the seasonal affective disorder, more commonly known as SAD, which is a subtype of depression that makes people feel similar symptoms such as oversleeping or a loss of energy. While indoors, long exposure to high contrasting imagery, such as a TV in a dark room, black text on a white background, or even white text on a black background, can lead to eye strain. On the other hand, when designers properly balance the use of dark materials and environments, they can transform the way that users interact with the design. 
For instance, designing with dark materials can facilitate elegant and modern creations because of the dramatic boldness of the shade. Even though white is often used to seemingly enlarge spaces, darker surfaces can be used to warp a person's perception of a space in other ways. For example, it can make the ceiling appear lower or it can stretch a hallway. Some designers argue that dark surfaces can enlarge spaces in their own way because it makes it difficult to distinguish where the edges are. Dark colors can also be used to make other colors and shades seem more vibrant. Similarly, controlling light in a design means that you're also controlling the shadows that surround it because without adequate darkness, the light becomes meaningless. Consciously using darkness in a design also means that the experience doesn't have to be solely visual since it allows people to focus on their other senses. In the right scenario, darkness is a powerful tool to communicate emotions or tell stories without using words to, for example, project a feeling of empathy about the subject. Darkness can also be implemented to reduce the impact of over overwhelming stimuli in stressful environments. And as an added benefit, reducing stimuli can reduce light pollution in an urban setting and in private spaces, which directly relates to the fact that we need darkness for our brain to naturally release melatonin so that we can maintain a healthy circadian rhythm. So if you're anything like me, you live in a rented unit where the interior design focuses on providing a space that most people find nice enough. This means that the walls are painted white, or if they were daring enough, they decided to go with some variation of beige. These bright features continue throughout the unit without a care for the purpose or intent for each individual space. There's a high chance that this is yet another anonymous glass tower because the developers know that people like to invest in floor to ceiling windows, regardless of the excessive heat gain that makes sustainable strategies more challenging or the lack of privacy, that means that the blinds will likely be closed for a significant portion of the day. The point that I'm trying to make with this scenario is that designers can intentionally introduce darkness into their projects to alter how people perceive a design and in doing so, enhancing their experience with it. These introductions can improve how well the project performs, how the users feel, and even how legible the concept is. This includes using dark materials to improve the performance of passive heating strategies. The heat stored through this process can then be redirected to other spaces, such as bedrooms. In other industries, the use of carbon black, a carbon powder that is frequently used as a pigment, allows rubber tires to last longer because it helps to direct the heat away from vulnerable parts and it also protects the tire from UV damage. Movie theaters, on the other hand, have to ensure that spaces remain dark for an engaging movie experience while ensuring that the visitors are still able to exit. Because of this, I think theaters are designed so that people are unconsciously guided back to the lobby by maintaining a contrast in the lighting, kind of like seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. Darkness is often used to create a more intimate setting to make sure that people in a sexual or non-sexual relationship can feel more comfortable with each other. And in spaces where the focal point is the light itself, designers have used darkness to create a feeling of awe for the display. Darkness has also been used to confuse people so that they believe that what they're looking at is infinite, like space itself. Other designers have used darkness to communicate a concept. And my personal favorite is the Holocaust Tower at the Berlin uh, Jewish Museum. This is because when people visit this space, they are overwhelmed with a feeling of oppression and hopelessness. And whether people realize it or not, they often use their dark fashion style to tell people how they feel, how they see the world, or to simply rebel against a more expressive style, just to name a few. So to summarize, I think darkness impacts uh, users' interaction and experience through the signs that improve performance and appearance that produce a specific set of emotions or feelings or that more effectively communicate what the designer is trying to say. Before you go, let me know in the comments of other projects that use darkness effectively. Thanks for watching this episode of Subjective Design. 
if the sign runs in your veins. Make sure you subscribe for more. You can also follow me on Instagram for updates and related content. Music for this video was produced by my friend YoYo Beats. You can find him on Instagram to listen to more of his music.